Yeah. They have been paying for internet for like what twenty years, and you've never really used it. Never. <laughs> so I don't even have a cell phone. So I'm, you know, I got around on horseback when I was growing up. But a whole lot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so tell tell us. You said something about last night we were talking. You said you got a special accommodation. For your yeah. But, well, with the way that see, I was. Five four and weighed 140 pounds when I was in the military. <laughs> well, the company and my commanded, brother was in the military too. I'll yeah. let him maybe say something about that after my dad. Well, the company commander had it in his mind that I should test out for West Point, and he was so sure of me that he got a special arrangement that I would be on paper I'd be five six, but I was only five four, and now I'm five two. Little short guy, can you believe that? Huh? Gravity, my, it's well, cruel. Yeah. Gravity is cruel. <laughs> yes, I'm taller than both my parents. Yeah, and I'm only five four and a half. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I like, I'm a head taller, yeah. like yeah. really taller. Let's stand up. Let's show. Okay. Okay, maybe I'm inches taller. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's see. Can you? Oh, somebody's asking. Can you still join the army if you're not strong or don't have a special kind of physique? No, it might not. Just, just proved it to you. <laughs> well, you. Well, we'd go with uh, when you take training. You'd have these ten foot high walls that you'd have to scale. Scale in, in running, and I think we also have have one rifle. And uh, because I was short, I touched the top of it. And just be trem trembling and just barely make it all. You'd have to do that. And then to go in the mess hall and eat, you had to uh, uh, chin yourself six times. What? So you had to do six a, chin ups before you could eat? Yes. And, and then. I don't know the, people the, who can do the, one the chin up these the days. Last, <laughs> the last chin up, I'd be just, tre just trembling, trembling, but I usually made it. So. And if you didn't, you didn't eat? That's right. <laughs> oh, boy, I don't think that. <laughs> Your bodies would They'd see, sneak you out a biscuit see, or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Dad was telling me about your time in the You had to run with the 40-pound backpack. And uh, he's, he's always been sneaky. Well, he um, emptied out his 40-pound backpack and put some kind of balloon and blew it up. And it looked really heavy, and he was leading the company in March. I think they went on ten mile march. And when he got back, then he quick put the other stuff. He went back to the bear, put the other stuff that was supposed to be packed. And uh, if he had gotten caught, he'd still be in jail. <laughs> <laughs> you would go to jail for that? Well, I don't no, know. I don't. I don't think so. Demoted and ranked. Demoted yeah. and ranked. Um, thank you, Elena. Elena sent a gift. Okay, so type in, if, if you guys ask some questions that I didn't get to before we went off, uh, ask them now. Uh, Derek wants to know, how are you able to travel so much when most people can't afford it? I think you just well, have to pick and choose yeah, where what, yeah. what you spend your money on. Like my parents, they don't get rid of anything. My mom's <laughs> slogan is, use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without. So yeah. you just, you keep wearing everything you have. Like, like Rob laughs at me because I have yeah. clothes from, shoes from 20, 25 years ago oh, that you, I still yeah. wear. This nice shirt I'm wearing. That was bought in the thrift store. Yeah. And you paid two dollars for the shirt, but if you went to a big box store, it forty bucks. Forty bucks. Yeah, yeah. You know, you just have to pick and choose where you spend your money. Yeah. A lot of people make the money out. Yeah. And that's so. like four times, four or five times what you'd pay yeah. to you buy. You can you can tell it looks like I've been eating out a lot. <laughs> Nobody was gonna say anything. Yeah. Nobody was gonna say anything. Okay. Um. Let's see what happened. Oh, so we didn't have internet for a while. Uh, does your dad love Indian food? Has he tried it before? I've tried it before. I didn't really care for it, but my wife my just mom loves, loves it. it. Loves it. So. Yes, whenever we go yeah. to California, I have to take her to the Bollywood restaurant yeah, to yeah. eat. But I like Mexican food. Mm -hmm. That's what we call. We have a nice 
restaurant here in town. And you know what? Two people can go to that restaurant, the Mexican restaurant. It's 20 hours for two people to have a, so much food that you have to bring some of it home. I mean, it's amazing, you know? And let me ask Tim, do you have any like special memories or anything you want to share about us when we were kids or growing up? <laughs> Do I dare even no. ask? <laughs> Cartwheels on top of the roof. Oh, yeah. Okay, so one time the neighbors called my mom at work. Yeah. Do you know where your daughter is right now? Yeah. And my mom says, no, you called me here. Yeah. Duh. And I was on top of the roof doing yeah. cartwheels. I remember <laughs> in growing up, the neighbor threw a beer bottle onto our lawn. Timothy saw this and he threw it back and they threw him that bottle back and forth and the cops come and all three of them at me when I came around the here's the bottle up and put it in the garbage. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the peacemaker. Ever the peacemaker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I always said the cops called on me when I was like eight years old because I'd climb all the water towers yes. in town. Yeah. yeah, you brought me once. He brought me once. Yeah, I didn't know that. He oh, the yeah, water he brought so there they put, put like a lock on the ladder to climb the water tower so yeah. you can't climb up it because they don't yeah. want people falling off and hurting themselves. But what they didn't lock was the inside part. Yeah. So there be skinny people yeah. skinny people like us at the time when we were eight yeah. and six or whatever, yeah, yeah. could climb up the back of the ladder up to yeah. the top of the water tower. So yeah. you get in big trouble for I re that. I remember but he when always had the yeah. cops called. He was him. on top, <laughs> top of the water tower and he heard the sirens you know, coming for him. He scrambled down. There was a graveyard next door to the water tower. He went over there behind the tombstone until the cops left. <laughs> He's probably got a lot of stories like that. Half yeah. of them you don't even know. Well, I wouldn't dare say half of them I wouldn't even dare tell. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell tell a story on Tim. When he was in the military, he was in England for a while. Oh, here we got company coming. <laughs> Hi, guys. And, uh, Here's your Uncle Tim. What's <laughs> up? You rented some movies? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. They rented What's some up? movies. Some skin. Well, anyway, Tim threw a wine <laughs> bottle. He was with a French guy. Yes. And, and, the police, and, and the French police saw him. And he said, Dad, it was just like in the movies. They were blowing these little whistles. And he's movie. running down the road. <laughs> oh, that, that happened to him when he was in the service? Yeah. yeah. Oh. And there were two policemen were chasing him down in the street, right in the electrical tower. <laughs> wow. Um, this is after it's sponsored by Up One Life. A movie. Okay, well, that's pets too. Okay. okay. Uh, by the way. Let's see. I'm <laughs> also, the only Okay. Sponsored. Yeah, bye. Not sponsored. Uh, let's see. We got. Uh, Rain wants to know. I'm going into ninth grade. Do you have any tips for me? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I've got you my have, hat. You have to wear. I have to wear this tomorrow for to the Fourth of July. Right now for the interview. Oh, I have to wear this for the interview. Okay. <laughs> it kind of blocks my light to my eyes a little, but it's okay. Everybody knows what your eyes yeah. look like. Oh, uh, okay. Well, when I was in night, being short and everything, the big football players would shove me against the lockers. And I went to my dad. Said I said everyone's picking on me, Dad. What? What should I do? Well, he said, you know, son, I'm not going to be around here always to protect you. And so uh, you're going to have to figure something out. So one day at study hall in the library, I sat in the natural history section. And there I read about the wolverine. The wolverine is in, Minnesota, in northern, you know, America here, is a mean little critter. He, he weighs 40 pounds, but what he does is uh, he makes a screaming noise and runs that spray, and he even backed down a 150, 200-pound bear. Wow. And 
way he worked was he'd ambush people. I did the same thing. So, uh, you so, so you give advice to this ninth graders yeah, to be a, ambush be a, people? Yeah, yeah. And be, <laughs> be a Wolverine. Don't down. Yell and scream, and then pretty soon. So, Dad won a lot of fights just by acting crazy. Because if you act crazy, people be like, oh. See, I, I, I started acting, and this is the result of that. See, that's where she learned her acting from, being a Wolverine. So, so if he comes at you wanting to fight you, just act like a crazy Wolverine. <laughs> and then they'll be like, whoa, this yeah. guy is... Mm. Don't go near him. <laughs> I think you won a lot of fights, but did you tell me you had a nickname in grade school? What was no, that nickname? right through high school, my nickname was Monster. And so that's how I got in the military. It, back, back in the day... The, they had one counselor for senior kids, and so they hired the coach they with the career when you graduated from high school, and so the coach went down the line. Uh, you stay home and farm with your dad. You go to vocational school. You go to college. And then he got to me. Foster, he said, you like to fight a lot, don't you? Well, at that time, I did. He said, in the army. So that's what I did. <laughs> but also, not trust someone who just looks at you and points and says what you should do with your yeah. life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't, yeah, don't pee. You got to work out your own life. <laughs> uh, anything for Selena? Hi, says they're a big fan. We've got loves Mia. Who's yeah. your favorite Darman? Who's your favorite Darman actor? Well, you. <laughs> Surprise. <Yeah. laughs> Uh, it says we keep lagging the live stream. Like, I don't think your internet's very good here. Thank you yeah. for the gift, Angela. Um, no. Rain says mine is Cameron and Mikey. Yeah. Okay. So we've got Rob and my brother, Tim, the boy's uncle. They're all playing Frisbee outside with yeah. Eli. Yeah. So Tim came in the house. And Timothy came in the house. You didn't see him. He was right here. I don't know if you heard him. But he looks at my brother and said, are you the one that picked on my mom growing up? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but Tim, uh, Tim whispered something in Timothy's ear. Hey, Timmy, what did, what did, what did Tim whisper in your ear when you asked if he was the one that picked on me growing up? He said, what? Oh, he didn't admit it. He said, what? <laughs> uh, Catherine, let's see. What is your tactic for dealing with panic attacks in public? How do you calm yourself? Have no. you ever had a panic attack or like anxiety? No, no I've been usually calm. You know. <laughs> I I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true. I've yeah. seen you get worked up. Yeah. But in general, if you ever do get worked up, how do you calm yourself? Well. I just do you deep breaths? Do you yeah. pray? Do you... None of the above. You never, you never worry. No. Well, I. You know, not a bit worried. No. Okay. Not that he'll admit. Okay. Say, say, Eli. I rented Jurassic World, which I think is going to scare him. <laughs> what? I think this is going to scare. Oh, this is not. That's not the new one. That's not the new one. Maybe that's fine. I don't know. It says PG-13, so we may have to cover his eyes and yeah. ears. Because he's only four. Fine. Yes. Okay. So what are, are there any questions that you guys wanted to ask my dad about me, about growing up? Oh, um, Frank wanted to know, was it, was it, um, how, how were growing up then compared to now? Like well, it was a completely different culture. And uh, you never locked your houses. Now, this time period, we go out to work in the lawn, we lock the house up. But back then, you never locked anything up. And uh, you never heard of a murder in the bush. You never heard of that. It was just a, a different culture, a different way of living life. It was calm, you know. I mean, it has, has its pluses and minuses, right? But, right? but like when you say never hearing of divorce, that could mean on one hand people yeah. were happier and they worked things out more and they weren't comparing themselves to others but no. on the other hand it could mean that women were putting up with because they had no means yeah. to live on their own so they suffered things people see, don't put that, up with now the, the young women in that day 
you didn't have many options. You could be a, a nurse, be a school teacher, and uh, you get married and have a bunch of kids. Those are, the options. Those are so, your options. You're going to be a nurse, so a school teacher, if, or have if, lots of if kids. You got, See if you got uh, the, the, the lady could not uh, support herself for the kids, so she put up with them a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, then back then, it was a patriarchal society where uh, men kind of were dominant, and, and the wife didn't have too much to say. But now that that will change, you know. Mm -hmm. My wife has everything to say. <laughs> yep. Dad always, said, matriarch. Hey, yeah. Dad always says, you can tell a Norwegian, but yeah. you can't tell him much. <laughs> My mom's 100% yeah. Norwegian. Um, Brittany says, your dad reminds me of Carl from the movie Up. Have you seen the movie Up, Timmy? Maybe. Okay. Uh, that's a funny observation, and I guess I could see that. Um, <laughs> There's a Let's lot going see. on in the background here. Yes, that's okay. You it's, picked a high traffic area. I picked a high traffic area. I had the best lighting. I don't For know. Sure. Okay, so let's see what other questions you guys have written in. Uh, where is he? Elijah, can you come here a sec? Someone wants to say hi to you. Elijah, come here. Can you say hi, Selena, for our video? We're going to ask you something. He's good. No. down the stairs. Elijah's three years old. He just turned four. Oh, oh I didn't realize that. Yeah, okay. just a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Hi, someone wants to say hi to you. You want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> you got a friend today? Uh, hi, Mimi. Okay. Um, so, uh, what else about animals growing up yeah. well I grew up my dad allowed me to get a horse when I was 14 years old and uh, so before going to school in the morning then I feed horse uh, curry her and uh, exercise her oh and, I said this movie and, belongs and, to you yeah. now. okay <laughs> that's what I do I got to school but my favorite memories oh, are going down the river and back then, you had mountain lions passing through, bears and things like that. But I would uh, be on my my pillow, and I had a sleeping bag along. And then at night, I when you go see, camping, when I go camping, I was usually by my my horse, and my dog, and myself. And when you're laying there, back at that time, there were no lights or anything. You could see all the starry see a meteorite uh, float by. You could hear a beaver slap its tail in the rip and the, and the owl might be hooting. And then my dog slept at, at the foot of my sleeping bag. And I always had a rifle along to protect myself. But mm -hmm. see, I wouldn't think it was that long, but it was. And what people mostly did for entertainment was they hunted and they fished and then they'd have a a baseball game on uh, at, at the diamond of our little village, and uh, they, they, you know, yeah, and then, good clean fun. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, did you have a TV growing up? Did you have a TV? In our village. Village. Was, yeah. Well, I, it's a uh, hundred people, so it has to be a village. Okay, I guess you did. You in a village of a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I didn't even know that. So. <laughs> I but, thought you were from Portland. Uh, oh, now it's a town. Well, if there's maybe 150 people. No, well, there's not. There's... <laughs> you guys Google how many people in Cortland, Minnesota are sitting here and let us know. I doubt it's a village. Yeah. We're not, it's not 100 years yeah. ago anymore. But, but they, and the other thing, <laughs> in the wintertime, they, they had a warming house and a skating rink, and then the firemen of our little town, uh, and uh, <laughs> we'd play hockey. But other than that, you never you never went away for games or anything like they do now. We had a nineteen thirty seven Ford car and then when you look out and driving you could see the highway beneath there's so many holes in the bottom of it. And if you went in the gravel road then that dust would come up into the car. 
And Adit, that is a great question. It's actually a topic of what I, some of the things I wanted to ask my dad. Yeah. So Anna Adit is wondering, did yeah. you ever want to write a book or have you ever written a book? Well, I, yeah. Well, pro I have the material all written. I've got all file boxes full of stories about, you know, growing up in that particular era in, in life and uh, things that, that happened and things that were interesting at that time. <laughs> you know, I think, and I think if you did put out a book of your stories, yeah. not, I don't think any people on here right now would know who I'm referring to. No, no. Cause, but it would be Timmy's new dog, Jack, yeah. that he got at well, Universal the, Studios. Yeah. Oh. If, if my dad put out a book, Cross between Little House in the Prairie yeah, and Prairie right. Home Companion. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He's got all these stories he's written yeah. about growing up and what it was like yeah, back yeah. then and his childhood. It would actually be a good TV show. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, I've, I've encouraged him to write a book, and he was yeah. taking writing classes, and maybe maybe that's yeah. where it rubbed off on me, perhaps. I have three years of writing classes, and uh, the people who taught the writing classes were professors from the college that taught me and things like that. So I have the, the best of the best, so to speak, you know. So what's the next story he's written? Well, now, now the last story I wrote is called Silent Strength, and it's about my mother, my, my two sisters that write about our mother and the, the trauma she went through in life and things that happened to all of us. But life is not always easy. <laughs> the first lessons you have to learn is that life is not fair, and just accept that. Yep. And uh, you, 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 being being successful in life is doing your very best at whatever you do well. That's what I've always deemed as successful. So, mm -hmm. and if, if you compare yourself with others, you will become vain and bitter. There will be greater and lesser persons than yourself. And that little quotation comes from Desert. That'd be a good thing to look up and read for yourself. Or painting on the wall upstairs. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, that's kind of itchy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe I don't need to wear it anymore. <laughs> Rob. Yeah. Um, so, so he does have some stories and. Do you think the reason you haven't done anything with him is because you're scared of rejection? No. What do you think the reason is you haven't done anything with your stories? <laughs> I haven't. Well, one of the biggest things is all the work. Okay. It, it sucks all of your energy. And, uh, you know, at this stage of my life, it doesn't really mean stories go to, um, I maybe have 20, 30 people in my stories. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always try to. Uh, has, it's, it's true, but to be inspiring to other people and then to get maybe a little subtle message about my belief system, uh, who I am, where I am, the purpose of my existence, and uh, some of these are, you know, great philosophical questions about life. And uh, I've always dealt with that through stories. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> uh, I had a a guy, a good friend of mine with a master's degree in education, I was going to write a story about metaphysical principles. And I said, went over to his house, and we were great friends. I says, tell me now, uh, Ron, his name was Ron Art, uh, well, tell me everything you know about metaphysical principles. And he said, hell, I don't even know how to spell it. <laughs> He's a professor? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's an answer but, for but you. But anyway, see, to talk about metaphysical principles, I'm not going to read something that he uh, but to a story and, and find out what they are through metaphysical principles. So I use the, the, the animals in the forest to tell that story. Uh, and, and, and that really explained it, and people didn't even know they were being taught. The best thing you can do is to entertain yeah. people and yeah. make them feel good and not, you slip that message yeah. at the beginning. Yeah, so, um, I that's used, what the best, yeah. that's I the used best humor, yeah, 
And I worked for a place called Golden Valley Lutheran College, and I was a recruiter and a speaker. Now, here's the amazing thing about that. I had never taken a single speech class in my life. The next thing you know, I'm out there in front of churches and people, but I, I believe that I had a good story. And uh, so, uh, and it was well by doing that. But being the big, brave man that I am, when I would go out to speak, I would take my mother along. <laughs> my, my first wife had passed away a gravel truck ran a stop sign, and she was nine months pregnant. And then the, I was in a Volkswagen. Now, if a Volkswagen hits a gravel truck that's run a stop sign, you know who's going to win there. It's not going to be the Volkswagen. But anyway, I developed a, a real good sermon based on some of the facts. And then it would relate to all of us who we have tragedy in our life. It's that accident happened. Uh, she was killed instantly along with the baby. And then I was in a coma, I had been badly damaged. And I woke up in the emergency room at this hospital. They thought I was going to die. And so the chaplain was in there to whatever comfort he could. When I woke up from the coma, the doctor put his hand on my shoulder and said, son, your wife and your baby are dead. Now, what did I say? Amazing. I don't remember saying it, but they told me this is what I said. I quote from the book of Job. Now, Job is a story about why do bad things happen to good people. And this is what I said. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's the, and that helped, you know, through, Can you guys through. imagine having that much faith when you just found out your spouse mm -hmm. and your child yeah. have died? Yeah. So, to just say, bless the Lord. Yeah. Bless the so, Lord. And there's another verse in the book of Joel that says, Though he slay me, yet will I come. So then when I took and so many people course. now have such shaky faith that any anything happens, I don't believe in God anymore. No. This bad thing happened. Yeah, and they don't have that yeah. fortitude, that yeah. trust, that stay to it to go through the trials. But you yeah. know what? The yeah. Scripture says rain falls on the just and oh, the unjust yeah. alike. That's right. We're yeah. all going to, you yeah. know. Yeah. So uh, anyway, then the way I got into speak, well, first of all, look, I was working a lot of different things. I worked in the men's sick room at the state hospital. At that time in history, anyone that was sleeping in a tent or anything, they had them up in the fall of the year and they sent them to this big hospital. And in the men's sick room, regardless if you were a criminal, just really deeply mentally ill, you went to the men's sick room. And, uh, and there I, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about death because that's where the people went. And my first day in the job, the manager of the sick room said, Foster, go over there and tell them when that man's dead. So then... That was I, your first day on the job? My first day on the job. Go tell me when that guy's dead? Yeah. And they wanted to see if I had what it took to work in the men's sick room. You know, so... And I always treated people with great respect. And... Uh, there's a lot of men, when you're mentally ill, that's when you're, you're doing crazy things all the time. They're, you know, we're perfectly normal, normal kind of so Some there, people just have like delusions. Like yes. one doctor was saying to me, every time he'd come to visit her, yeah. every day he would say, doctor, I had a baby last night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there was no way, you yeah. know, sometimes it's just like delusions yeah. you well, then we had a part of that state hospital that was called a criminal war. That's not the official name, but that's if you kill someone with an axe or something terrible. Well, they would be come to the men's sick room. And one of those guys come up behind me, and he got full muscle just like that. And I was alone with uh, 50 people in the ward. And uh, in the patients the, were just like that. I uh, pile on this guy and pull him off of me. But then I saw that work 
they were disrespectful to other people with mental and physical problems. And when they did get to them, sit there like they didn't know anything, <laughs> nothing was going on. They wouldn't go for the help or anything. Mm -hmm. like that. But uh, that, was, that was a wonderful job, the years that I worked there. But then I received a call from Golden Valley Lutheran College to be their representative. And, and I said, why would they call me? I don't know anything. And just because you've been in the intelligence service, that doesn't mean you know anything either, you know. But uh, it, they were the, the jobs I've done in life, they, they've been really good experiences, you know. Mm -hmm. so. I saw Jordan said he's got COVID now. They're praying for him, so yeah, okay. wishing him well. Uh, let's see. Any questions that I haven't got to type them in again. Um, so what do you, what do, would you tell people? Like if they don't know, like what they're supposed to do with their life or what their purpose is, what would you, what well, kind of advice would what, you give? What I would do is uh, ask myself, what are my strengths? What are my gifts? What do I like doing? And then start pursuing that. Maybe even a real low level job. But if it's something that you love, you can advance in that, you know. Just like many years, uh, I owned the, what was called a quality paint company. And uh, I didn't call myself a painter. I said, my job in life is to make the world a more beautiful place to live. And that's what I did. And, uh, and then people can tell if you're interested in them and interested in your work. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I never had to put an ad in the paper. My... A plate was full all year long. Mm -hmm. in, in the winters, but I always had some building to go into that, that needed painting. And so mm -hmm. I did that for many years as well, you know. So, so you know, um, those of you who've taken my online course, You Are Worthy, heard me yeah. mention that yeah. there were times I would go with my dad painting Saturdays. Yes, he would take right. me. I uh, said she was better than any guy I ever hired to work. <laughs> <laughs> We, I think girls pay more attention to details yeah, sometimes. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Sometimes. So, so. Uh, yeah. So I had some experience. So he, he painted houses. That was another. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you did that for a lot of years. Yeah, I did. Yeah. He, yeah so. Well, it, it, I think whatever you do and wherever you are, just give it your best. Give it your all. Uh, come early, go home late. And <laughs> that's what I did. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for the gift of Lena. Um, oh, so you guys, Jordan, Jordan is not here. He he's yeah. blind. Yeah. So he that's what he needs described. Yeah. To us because he he can't see. Yeah. So he just hears us. Yeah. So Donald yeah. Foster. Yeah. And did you you did not have you had a brother who. Passed, passed away, away as a baby. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. And then you have two sisters who are coming today. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yes. Yes. So little well, little sister. Are you the I'm oldest? I'm the oldest. Okay, yeah. so you have two little sisters that are yeah. coming to yeah. visit my aunties. Well, they're in their 70s and 80s, so, <laughs> you know, they're... Oh, one, one just turned 80. Yeah, that was Sharon, my you, sister oh, Sharon. Oh, that was that loud. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you a trick I did on Sharon. Uh, when I'd be out horseback riding wherever, and I'd always tie my horse to the telephone pole outside my dad's grocery store. And then I just knew that they were gonna, her and her best friend were gonna steal my horse. So what I did was a cinch is a pulls the saddle on in place. And so I loosened the cinch, not enough so that the saddle would fall off, but when they took the horse, and they were galloping, then they would slide back off the rear of the horse. Now, I was 15 years old at the time, and they were, you know, younger. <laughs> and uh, so, I, I, you know, they would have been hurt, but they never forgot it, and I never forgot it. So they galloped away on your horse, and the slid, so, they slid off was, back to the horse. Yeah, so. <laughs> That's a prank. He was yeah. a prankster. Um, and you used to go fishing and camping and hunting yep. and you built sports and you yes. did a lot of stuff that yeah. now they no, just they sit don't. in their they room don't. and play video games. Yeah. They yes. don't go out and Well, they're outside or... all the time, you know. 
and uh, you know, mo mother would shoe with so we had to adjust to that. I, I think it's become a, a, I don't know if it's become a more scary world or yeah. just that the news is so widely spread. Yeah. Like people don't want to, they're afraid to let their kids go outside and play because yeah. they could be kidnapped. Well, sure. And they probably were kidnapped back in your day too. There was no, <laughs> there was no news to report. Yeah. So you thought everybody was safe. Yeah. Um, thank you, Lizzie. Uh, so it's, it's, we're just more hyper aware of everything yes. now. Well, the we, news cycle is what does it. Yeah, work. it just it instills people. Well, people or families in Cortland, where I grew up, this little village, and in that that have TV sets, and there's mostly snow on there. They were black and white, and you'd if you ever heard of the Lawrence Welch show, they. That's how, that. no, that's how, that's that. how, I think the never, oldest person on my live yeah. stream is 40. <laughs> Most people on here are teenagers. Well, when Elvis Presley appeared on television on the Ed Sullivan show, he was a young man, but they could only film him from the waist up because he swiveled his hips and they were thinking that's being, you know, doing mm -hmm. you know, well, mm -hmm. What kind of behavior? There's a new Elvis movie out. Have you seen the advertisements it, for it? Yeah, it's been here. Not, not. Yeah. So, Dad was around for all of that. Who was your Who was your um, inspiration growing up? Well, it's hilarious because it's not like that now. But the movies were cowboy shows. Uh, Tom Mix, don't for her to him. A Durango kid, uh, Gene Autry, you probably heard yeah, of. Yeah, he was a cowboy. Yeah, worry about. And so we would, oh. And, and then, Roy Rogers, you know, he cowboys growing up. And, and then the other one was Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. Who's heard of Tarzan? <laughs> okay, so Orly said she's, she used to watch Lawrence Welk as a kid. Yeah. Um, yeah. Lily, I'm the wrong person to answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, there's there's something about appropriation that you might want to look up. Yeah. Okay, Jordan. Um, so my dress is hot pink and it's a V-neck. Yeah. Uh, and I have this like little sheer jacket over the top that has flowers embroidered on it in turquoise and hot pink yeah. and yellow and green. And my mom got this in Mexico when I took her on a cruise. Yeah. I'm currently for those of you who like the vlogs. I haven't done a vlog in a while. Yeah. I'm currently cutting together the vlog of my mom and I and my friend when we went to Mexico oh, on a that cruise. Was, yeah. Mom's been waiting to see that, so yeah. I'm getting that edited together. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know she's. I wanted to have it ready for here, but I didn't get it done in time. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Let's see. How did you start your career? You mean you or me? I don't know. So <laughs> let's both answer. Um, well, I, yeah. Uh, yeah, you go first. I, I started my career and I uh, left high school. I did go to college, but, uh, and I got bad grades in high school. I was always getting in fights and everything, and I joined the Army. So what does the Army do with you? Discipline. No, you know, the, well, that too. <laughs> But they put you in the intelligence service. And they I don't got, do that to everybody, Dad. No, and the, and you I must got, have <laughs> things going right. I in your got mind. there. All these guys spoke a couple languages. They were college graduates, and one of my friends was a Rhodes Scholar. <laughs> it was just you know, just out of my element, so to speak. But I didn't have any trouble doing the work. You know, and mm -hmm. the, we one things we I had to do. I opened up the office in the morning, and there were unsafe and files that there were have had combination locks on. So what I had to do was memorize these ten safe combinations, and you couldn't have any um, you know, along you telling you what the number you had to have in your head. Well, anyone can memorize ten of those things. But uh, every three months, the combination would change. So then I had to uh, uh, re remember what I did after a while. You bought me flowers yeah. just to make up for all the years of torment as a child. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Thanks for the flowers. Do you want to introduce your girlfriend to my oh. audience? <laughs> 
filming live here, Shula. Oh, so look, come say look, hi. Look, you look, guys who's that? We're all wearing hi. pink. Yeah. We're all wearing pink. pink. We got the memo. That's, like we planned it. That's <laughs> called synchronicity. Synchronicity. And we say to Tim, how do you ever get that beautiful woman? Yeah, how did you score her? Oh. Like, how did you? How did you? Yeah, I want to know. I'll tell you how. It's yeah. mere child. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, look, but this is the first time in my life he's ever yeah. bought me flowers. Yeah, maybe beautiful. this is to make up for when he put my car in the sewer. Oh, yeah, remember that? Bonds? You remember when my car ended up in the sewer? He took my car on a joyride and. Well, yeah. Well, that. Well, I thought that was our car, but maybe it wasn't. Oh, what did he do to my car? Yeah, you. He took your car in the sewer. What did he do to my car? Yeah, back in, he in the day. Sewer ponds, so then the, all the sewage and everything would go out to these big ponds, and there were dikes running around these ponds. So my son Timothy took the car without permission, and him and his buddies are racing on these dikes around the sewer pond. And, and he, he turned a corner too short and ended up with the family car in the sewer pond. Well, then the, 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 sheriff, the sheriff came out. From it's where everything and they said, goes when you flush. That's yeah. where he put the car. <laughs> yeah, and so then the sheriff came out and said, who's your dad? Well, Timothy said, Don Foster. And the sheriff laughed. He got back in his car and he We had towed back to town. We had it in the backyard with all four doors open. Trying we, to get the smell of poop out? Yeah, because and it was in the, you know, the cushions, and it didn't work, so we had to junk the car, you know. Perfectly good car, you know. <laughs> he just did this to look good on camera. Well, no, I think. You he's think done, he really meant it? Yeah, he's done that for yeah. his sisters, yeah, many times. Yeah, of then. course he did it for his he's auntie. He's done it for his for her mother, you know. Well, of course he did it for his mom. Yeah, <laughs> but my wife already. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, so we have a few minutes left. Is there any burning questions you guys okay. have had? <laughs> Um, how long does it take to film a dog video? Now that they're longer, it's anywhere from three to five days typically yeah. for one episode. And they yeah. put out five episodes a week. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. So they and have five. Now I hear they have six teams of directors working yeah. every day. And then I haven't met the new one. Katie here has memorized all of the dialogue and it sound too wooden if she, she memorizes and then she improvises when she plays a character. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not always word for word. I try to say it uh, in a way that sounds natural as if yeah. I would say it. Sometimes it's written in a, the writer has a different cadence than how you would different speak. Different cadence or different they turn cultures. The words around. They look mm -hmm. at things different from another culture. Right? Or you went to New York. I'm trying to think. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. I've been to Washington D.C., and I no, I don't think I've ever been to New York. You know. Okay, has mom? No. Has but Tim? You, no. None of us have. <laughs> None of us have been to New York. Fourteen other countries, though. That's yeah. got to count yeah. for something. And how many countries does mom get to? So I know she's been to Egypt. Yeah. She's been to Ireland. Yeah. Well, you know, I was pretty innocent when I went into the service. And I can remember uh, some training I was taking at Washington, D.C., and then uh, three other soldiers and myself, we were going to stay at the YMCA, the Young Men's Christian League. And uh, so we hired this taxi cab driver and said, boys, you want to go to the YMCA? Well, we said, sure. Well, he said, I got a better place it's for you to go. Well, I said, what's that? He said, it's a cat house. Well, I, so I spoke up and said, a cat house, is that where they raise kitty cats? And everyone started laughing. Then I real, realized that a, a cat house was a place where younger ladies entertained soldiers for a price. And that, anyway, if, we did end up going to the, <laughs> to the YMCA. And back in that day, it was all young men and no one had any suits and no one thought anything of it. So we all swam naked and it was just part of part of life. So I didn't even know. Times have changed. I didn't even know what 
homosexual or queer or any of those things. You've never or, heard of those never, terms. Never heard of them. So I got being in the military, I soon got straightened around on that. You know? They they they. There was more educated you. Yeah, there was it was more prejudice back. You know, like if you go to China, it's uh, education, education, education. But you come to America, it's sports, 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 <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> yes. Majority uh, of hours were from my brother, Tim, who just came and introduced himself with his girlfriend. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I know I'm from Ireland, but happy 4th of July to you guys. Thank you for including me in the live stream. Oh, our mother or, or my wife was in Ireland not too long ago. Yeah, to, oh, 2019. Too? Yeah. I took her. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Ireland, yeah, thank you very yeah. much. Which, which, well, now the the bagpipes—they're from Ireland or Scotland Scotland. Or Scotland. Oh, we have somebody um, on uh, Elena. Aren't you from Scotland? Am I getting that mixed up? Yeah. I think I think Elena from Scotland. Am I confused? I know. I don't well, know my it, geography very well. It, so. Anyway, as I understand it, they well, she, Arlene was there, my two sisters. Where? Either Scotland oh. or Ireland. Well, yeah. anyway. No, no, Did, didn't she? She went to England with your two sisters. Well, that too, you know. Oh, maybe. But anyway, I was so impressed by seeing the bagpipers that at my funeral now, when that comes, <laughs> whatever day that he, is. He's been planning his funeral you know, since I was a teenager, yeah. to be honest <laughs> with they, you. They're going to. She's hired a bagpipe. <laughs> literally, my literally. dad is going to have bagpipes playing at his funeral. He's already got it planned and paid. Yeah. Take the burden off of me. You know how many people die, and their they, yeah. their kids are like, "What do I do now? You yeah. got it all laid out." So. One one reason myself, we we were living in Germany, at the time, and then we. <laughs> Well, okay. Anyway, that was my mom. My buddy and myself, we decided to bicycle across England, all the Stonehenge, and then so we got into downtown London, and we asked around where we could rent a bicycle. Mm -hmm. And on the side street, right next to what they call Trafalgar Square, was a bicycle shop. And this, and right away he could tell that we were Americans. And I said, We need um, two bikes, 10 days, and I'll pay you in advance. And the and, uh, Englishman says, I've not taken money from you. I can't do that. He says, You Yanks, you're good for it. So we didn't get our names or anything. So we have these two oh, bicycles. Oh, wow. And well, that was, that wouldn't fly the, nowadays. Someone just let you take two bikes and yeah, say, oh, yeah. you're good for it. I don't even need to write your name down. Yeah. It wasn't that long after World War II and uh, the Americans fought along with the English Hitler, you know. Mm -hmm. So Elena said, I am a New Zealander who's living in Scotland. Oh, okay. wow. Okay. Catherine, is there any person who wishes you, who watches you live on YouTube from yeah. Delhi, India? I don't know Delhi, India, but I know there are some other from India who are watching me or do watch me live. Yeah. Thank you for the gift, uh, Nicola. Um, so I think it's been an hour. I don't know. I think I usually buy for an hour. Yeah. Oh, shut down. Is it 10? Oh, yeah. I got, I got. Watch on upside down. So hopefully that was enlightening to you. We'll answer all your questions. I have to help my mom cook for the people that are coming. Yeah. Well, yeah, and good. Timmy's showing you his okay. body. Not yeah. sponsored. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's me. Yeah. Now well. you can say you finally met my dad. And yeah. I guess maybe we can interview you some other time. Okay. <laughs> I hardly ever Thank leave you for time. watching. I'm going to end it in five seconds. Okay. Bye. So, bye, guys. Thank you for the gifts. Thank you for the questions. One. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Wow.